Sullivan, you said you'd have that article for the paper today. Have you got it? Good morning, Linda. Good morning, sir. Have you got it? Would tomorrow do? Oh, sir, I've given you two extra days already. I mean, come on. And speaking of things not done, your English essay was due in yesterday. Hey, sir, you put me in charge of the Junior Gazette. I'm not just a pupil now. I'm an editor. And I am kind of busy. And I'm not just teaching you English and writing new articles. I am assistant head of this school, and I also am kind of busy. Then how can you spend eight minutes in the toilet? <laughs> Actually, Linda, I was not aware that I was being timed. I just happened to notice. That's two minutes over your average. Now, come there on! There are times, Linda, when I think you ought to be fitted with an off switch. This is what I'm saying, that we're not going to get anything done, are we? Trouble, Mr. Knowles? N no, 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 not at all. No. This lot behaving, are they? Oh yes, they're they're, they're fine. They're just fine. Good, good. Well, just keep a tight grip on them. That's what they understand. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> right. I'll just leave you to it. If I get my English essay in for Thursday and you get your article in for tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's a basis for negotiation. How about if I got my article in for Thursday and you got your English essay in for tomorrow? Sir? Now listen, can everyone please remember, we're not supposed to have this phone. <coughs> Matt Kerr doesn't know he's paying for it, so can we please keep it hidden at all times, OK? OK. I don't see the point. Linda, it'd be great. We could fit it on page four and do it weekly. Oh, come on, why not? You want reasons? You know, this could give the paper a bit of class. An acne advice column with all the best creams and stuff. I was going to call it the face space. How about the zip bit? Shut <laughs> it, Kenny. Or blackheads revisited. Kenny! Or pass bus. Oh, spot on. So the first thing I tell anyone who joins the paper is that they need one thing, guts and brains. That's two things. What? You said two things. Yes, I know. I know I said two things. It's my little test. Well done. So you're going to need two things, OK? Guts, brains and a good sense for figures. Well, that's three things. Sorry? So which of the three things is the one thing you need? Both. Anyone seen Colin? Now, why don't we just forget all about the play part? Yeah, I suppose. Something up? No, of course not. Yeah, look, this is guaranteed to cheer anyone up this side of Norbridge High. You know Mr Knowles, the new English teacher? Now, come on! Now, now, come on, children. I mean, you really must shut up. Don't say another word, and if you do, I'm not going to tell you a thing about the semicolon. Hmm? As a matter of fact, I don't find that funny, Kenny. I don't find that funny at all. Oh, come on, Sarah. I was only trying to cheer you up. All right, all right. Any advance on seven? things you need in newspapers. Hey, come on. What's in those? I had a lap spike. Just for a moment. Just for a tiny second. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? It was a bargain. I mean, a real bargain. They were just, like, sitting there, cut price. Like they were beckoning to me. She, yeah, what was beckoning you? Colin! Oh, she finds out I'm dead. Do you think it's true? You really can't take it with you? No. <laughs> Where is it? Where's what? You were collecting the money for Farndale's advert. I haven't forgotten. Oh, yeah. What's all this? It's a bargain, Linda. Honestly, I, I was up at the sports shop where they make the sports stuff and I couldn't stop myself. You've spent the money, haven't you? You've gone and spent that money, haven't you? More or less. Hand me the knife. Sure. Don't you think you ought to consider that unarmed? Ping-pong balls. Half ping-pong balls. How many of them? Well, they make them in two halves, you see, and they always have a few defective ones left over. How many? 
100,000. Are you telling me, Colin, that you have spent Gazette money on 100,000 effective half ping pong balls? It was a bargain. Look, we're getting in on the ground floor here. It's an investment. It's a whole new concept in... Balls. Colin, the ping pong balls are yours and the Farndale money is the Gazette's and I expect it back. Clear? Well, that's a cinch you're loaded. You'll be able to cover it, no problem. Not quite as simple as that, Spike. I've got a temporary cash flow situation. Yeah? Just a minute. Just a minute. Spike, have you ever had a sort of a ringing in your ears like a giant till? No. It wasn't a lap, Spike. It was a moment of pure genius and inspiration. <laughs> what are you talking about? I can sell them. I can sell the little suckers. They'll be the biggest craze since my last one. What are you going to sell half ping pong balls as? What else is a ping? OK, news team, story yeah. conference. Come on, before we miss this week's news completely. What are you doing? It's all right. What? It's all right. It's OK. Oh, is it? Where's Sarah? Well, she just stormed out. What did you say to her? Well, hardly anything. I just did my impression of Mr. Knowles. Of who? Mr. Knowles, the new English teacher. You know. Now, really, class. Now, come on! Look, how do you expect me to be able to teach you if you won't settle down and work? Now, please, please, please. Look, you're just going to have to be quiet. All right? All right, that's it. If you won't do the work in class, you can just do it for homework, right? So, homework for tomorrow is... Uh... Homework for tomorrow is page 73. Mr Knowles? I don't think I quite caught the homework. It's all right, you can call me Simon now. They've all gone. Forget about the homework, too, eh? We'll pick it up next time. Bye. Quite a bunch, your friends, aren't they? Very lively. Yeah, they are. I suppose they're always like this in the new teacher, eh? Yeah, always. Well, just so long as they don't push me too far, I don't want to get, you know, really tough with them. Listen, I've got to go. I have a word with you, Mr. Knowles. Yeah, I'm going. Well, how's it going, Simon? Oh, it's fine. It's fine, I think. Simon, uh, could I give you a word of advice? The thing is, Simon, if the class see that you believe you can control them, they'll believe it too. But if they see just a moment of uncertainty, you're lost. Do you ping? <laughs> Colin! Pinging is in, Sarah. Don't try to fight it. For instance, a personal stereo for the silence lover. The world's first, Sony Walknot. Not now, Colin. Sarah, I'm trying to let you in on the ground floor here. Not now! Haven't you two got classes to go to? Ah, Mr Sullivan. Do you ever have a problem finding the ideal little gift for your favourite aunt? Not now, Colin. Because I'm willing to show you on an entirely trial basis. The most innovative, exciting, that's Teacher features. Don't we get enough of them during the day? If we knew more about them, what they like out of school, just be your basic interview, a sort of profile. What's Miss Martin, maths teacher, really like? Or Mr Knowles, English teacher. That's what this is about, isn't it? Now, what do you mean? He's your cousin, isn't he? Kenny told me how upset you were when he was making fun of him. So, we checked it out. I didn't want anyone to know that. I hear he's not going down too well with his classes. Yeah, well, if people just took the trouble to get to know him a bit better... And you're going to take the trouble for them, is that it? Well, do I get to do it? OK, Sarah, it's a bye. Thank you, Linda. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Yes, but will Mr Knowles? <sighs> OK, 
Kenny, where's the phone at the moment? Pot plan. Linda, what are you doing? Never seen anyone talk to a plant before. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, could you tell your sister to stop using my typewriter, please? Sister? Faraz, I haven't got a sister. Oh, well, maybe you should tell her that, eh? You must have been born while I was out. Well, I'm always telling Mum you don't pay any attention to me. Who are you? Tony Tilsley, but my friends call me Tiddler cos I'm small and popular. Then why aren't you away playing with them? Because your newspaper said it's for children. There's nothing in it for anyone under 12. So I thought maybe you need a junior section. And I thought, seeing as I'm top in English in the lower school, I'd be the right person to write it. And I was thinking it would be the right kind of experience. Cos when you're too old to be in this kind of paper, I'll be about the right age to be the new editor, won't I? Well, you did ask. Linda. I'll be back with you in one moment. Colin, I finished your ping pong poster. I did get the name right, didn't I? I can't think of a time when I didn't want to be a teacher. Ever since I can remember, that's been it. That's been the holy grail, if you like. And I'll be honest, I've, I've got a good enough degree to get a better paid job. And it's not that people haven't pointed that out to me, but I can't think of anything as, well, as fulfilling as contact with young people, as a chance to help shape young minds. You see, when you're teaching, you, you're not just doing a job. I mean, a classroom isn't just a place where you work. It's, it's a place where you, where you're, Nurturing the future on the best of the past. Tell me, uh, what's the private Mr. Knowles like? Sorry? Well, have you got any hobbies or anything? Well, yes, but I don't think you'd be interested. No, I would, really. Well, it's a bit unusual. Well, the more unusual, the better. Well, as a matter of fact, I collect butterflies. You're going to make this guy popular because he poisons insects. Look, I'm a writer. I'll make it sound better. Good luck to you. Yeah. Right, so there's ten things that you need in the newspaper business, right? Or did we get to eleven? Not bad. Not bad? Not bad. Not bad. Well, what did he say? He said it was not bad. Hey, that's good. It is. Well, it's not bad. Come in. What do you think? Linda, will you stop doing that? I'm asking, what do you think? Of what? Of the paper, the new edition. Huh, that. Well? Butterflies? Not it's bad. Sea, isn't it? Not bad? I'm not just selling half ping pong balls here. I'm selling two thirds of the world's surface in off white plastic. Lepidoptera is the correct name for it. It's the study of winged insects. Now, when Graham and Roy saw the article in the Junior Gazette, they very nicely asked me if I'd bring along some of my specimens. Um, so I brought a selection here. <laughs> Now, you may want to pass these back, but um, do please be careful with them, because some of them are rather valuable. Wow, look at the wings on that. Yes, just, just be careful with them. Does it make you just want to rush out and stick a pin in something? No, no, come on, boys. Hey, sir, can you collect budgies like this? Just, just be careful, please. Some of them are rather valuable. Yeah, yes, I'll bet they are. Here, catch. <laughs> oh, it's too late, sir. They're all dead. <laughs> Not only was part of his collection destroyed, but he has also acquired the unenviable, though not overly imaginative, name of Butterfly. Rather the last straw for him. I don't know what it is you want us to do about it. But you do know what it is I wish you hadn't done. As a guide to the future? We'll stop the teacher features, of course. But as for Mr Knowles... Mr Knowles is a very dedicated and idealistic young man. If he can just conquer his problem with classroom discipline, I believe he has the makings of a very fine teacher. And somehow I don't think that's going to happen now. 
you have managed to make an already unhappy situation worse. However, I'm keeping you from your lunch. But there's nothing we can do. So you keep saying. We were trying to help. Congratulations. I don't think I can face lunch now. You'll get over it. Oh, will Simon. Do you think he'll be up then now? Why? I'm going to go and speak to him. What for? To say sorry I helped? But I don't know. <sighs> Linda, I've been looking everywhere for you. What did you think of my junior page? Got in, didn't it? Yeah, but what did you think of it? Not bad. Why apologise, Sarah? You're only trying to help. Yeah, but your butterfly collection... Oh, it's been years since I was doing that seriously. I just thought the kids might find it interesting. It's in a fashion they did. Actually, I think I owe you a favour. Up until now, I've just been kidding myself. Sort of pretending I was somehow managing. I think now I can see the truth. I'm not going to make it as a teacher. But that's what you've always wanted. That's what you've always wanted to be. And as the wise man said, what you want and what you get. You can't just give up. I'm trying to understand, Sarah. I've been making a complete fool of myself. Daydreaming about education. What I could do in it. Yeah, well then, do you know something, Mr Knowles? Simon. No, Mr. Knowles, I think I preferred you when you were a fool. Rosemary. Could you get me the Gazette on the phone, please? Certainly, Mr. Sullivan. Is it a private call or a school business? Oh, school business. Very definitely school business. And I'm very glad he did. After the supermarket fiasco, you can't afford another mess like this. Look, it wasn't my idea. Your editor. The only ideas you don't get credit for are the good ones. Yeah, I know. Well, here's something you don't know. Thanks partly to you, your headmaster now has grave doubts about Simon Knowles' future in Norbridge High. So, he's paying his class a surprise visit this Thursday to check on him. And somehow, I don't think Mr Knowles is in a fit state to make a good impression, do you? But what can I do about it? Something. Something? Something. Something. Linda? Sarah? We've got, got to do something. something. Stage one. We need to find out which class the headmaster's likely to drop in on. So Danny's going to get us a copy of the school's master timetable. How? Simple. I think why your newspaper wants a photograph of me. Oh, well, you're a bit of a school personality, Miss Chiswick. Uh, how about one of you over against the window there? Uh, you mean, uh, about here? Yeah, that's right. How's this? Lovely. Stage two. Thank you, Danny. No problem. The headmaster's got meetings all morning, and Knowles has only got one class in the afternoon. So it's got to be 3C. It's really very kind of you to give up your lunchtime to help you with the photocopying. Believe me, Miss Jessup, I'm getting as much out of it as you are. Stage three. I don't want to know how you do it, but you get everyone on this list to behave. You leave it to the experts. Fred. Tony Robbins, 3C. Raymond Smith, 3C. Eric Ashling, 3C. When you get Mr. Knowles for English tomorrow, yeah. on Thursday, you're going to behave like an angel. But you're going to make it look like you're being a naughty little boy. A bad little girl. But when Knowles tells you to do something, do it or else. Or watch it, or you'll be going home in buckets. I don't want to do it like this. The headmaster's going to appear about halfway through. This way, he's going to like what he sees.
He's doing an assignment with the headmaster. I wish he'd hurry up, so then we could be wondering where we've got to. Relax, will you? Yeah, well, I just hope the whole thing works. Relax, it'll work. Yeah, this once. This once is all we need. Hey, you two. What are you doing here? You're meant to be in Moses' class. We didn't like to tell you yesterday. Tell me what? 3C don't get Noles. We swapped over with 3B. 3B? The timetable must have been out of date. Spike, you've leaned on the wrong class. Oh, just a minute, what do you hear? Uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yes, sir? Mr. Knowles, um, can I see you outside for a moment? If you just uh, carry on working as you are. No, it's all right there, no. How's it going? It's almost like being a real teacher. You mean it's working? When I tell them to do something, they do it. Of course, this time I know before I say anything that they're bound to listen. You mean they're doing everything you tell them to? Of course. And you know they're going to do it before you even tell them? Well, naturally, that's the way you arranged it, isn't it? Mr. Knowles, I think there's something you should know. And that homework will be due in by tomorrow morning. Now, um, as it's nearly the bell, I think you may as well pack up. Right, well, I hope you all found that a useful lesson. I know I did. I mean, can you believe it? Just because he thought he could control the class, suddenly he could. Yeah, but will it stay that way? Well, he's done it once. Dunno. He's got a chance. He's got a much better chance. Anyway, I'm going home to see you. All right. See you tomorrow. Mm. Linda. Just wanted to say, sir, thanks for the article. Oh, not at all. Did you like it? Could we talk about the first paragraph, sir? What's wrong with the first paragraph? Well, it's a bit flabby, isn't it, sir? It is not flabby. You don't have to be defensive, sir. I'm not being defensive. I am never defensive. Look, I just don't think we can afford to be that flabby in the first paragraph. What with the second paragraph? What's wrong with the second paragraph? Well, it's a bit flabby, isn't it, sir? That's not flab, Linda. That's style. Is there any part of the article you did like? Oh, I liked it. There was just a bit too much style.